Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday after Pentecost. This morning we are celebrating friendship, one of God's best gifts to humankind. Part of the worship service will be coming from here, Fellowship Hall, and at other times uh, different uh, friends from the church will be leading worship and talking about friendship. We give thanks for all of the worship leaders this morning. We are planning on our summer worship taking place at 10 a.m. throughout the summer, not shifting to 9.30 a.m. as we normally do for the season. And details will be coming next week about some July outdoor worship services. We invite you to do your part on Friendship Sunday by reaching out to a friend or calling a member of the church who maybe you haven't talked to since the pandemic began. Tonight at 7 p.m., as part of our open and affirming ministry, First Church is helping lead a Pride Week worship service. Go to milfordpride.org to link to the service tonight or later this week. The music ministry invites the congregation to participate in a virtual music project. Dan has written a piece, and we are in need of singers and anyone to record 20 seconds of a homemade instrument. Details are on the website or contact Dan at musicminister at firstchurchofmilford.org for more details. A vigil of light will take place on the evening of June 25th on the Plymouth Lawn to honor those who have died recently from racial injustice. People can submit messages in advance, and more details are on the church website. We are looking for Sunday school teachers for the coming program year. In particular, we're looking for additional teachers who are excited to get creative about teaching in an online format, if necessary, with guidance from Kelsey and the Faith Formation Ministry. Our faith is continually being formed, and there are opportunities to help our youth connect with Christ in many formats. You can email Kelsey or call the church to find out more or to express interest in volunteering. Tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., the church is holding its first parent support group online meet of the summer. Facilitated by Tammy Ty Satterley and assisted by me, we'll be discussing ways to engage our kids during this unique summer. Find the link on the church's website and invite your fellow parents to participate as well. We have other summer children's ministries in the works, including Vacation Bible School at Home. We have a link on the church's website for Silver Lake Camp at Home. Once again, good morning and welcome to worship. I welcome Anne, Robin, Linda, and Nina to help lead some of the worship. Now let us greet one another with signs of peace. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Thank you so much. So before we transition to the call to worship, I've asked you all to say something about friendship and perhaps about faith and the church. And so first I'm going to ask uh, Linda among this uh, group of four friends, uh, what is something that you value in a friend? Something I, a lot of things I value in friends and a friendship, um, care and concern, kindness, support, generosity, um, humor, a listening ear, honest feedback. You know, our friends, I think they know us better than we know ourselves. And I appreciate friends that um, care enough about me to give me that honest feedback. I like friendship to be uplifting. We can have fun together, but also hold space for each other when there are times that there are no words and um, for what I might be going through, for what they might be going through. Unconditional love. To me, friends are the family that you choose. Thank you, Linda. So now, Anne, I got a question for you. Um, why do you think the church is a place that you have made some strong friendships? Well, I have to say that I have over my long lifetime, I have made many very strong lasting friendships. I think that lasting strong friendships um, are based on either um, common interests or common beliefs and values. And I find that whenever I walk into First Church or flip through the directory or attend a Zoom conference and look at the faces of the people that I know, I see people who share my common interests and who share my common beliefs and my common values. Um, there are so many opportunities for people at First Church or at any church 
um, to, to join into activities where there are things that interest you. If you're interested in music, I mean, we have so many different music opportunities. That's wonderful. If you're interested in, in teaching, we have faith formation opportunities, teaching and learning. We have many things that you can do. Um, and anyone who says that there's nothing to do hasn't really looked at the list of things that we have available. Um, but I know that if I walk into First Church at any given time, um, there will be somebody there that I can laugh with. There will be somebody there that I can cry with. And there will be someone there for sure that will help me to take um, all those lemons and help me make lemonade. Um, I would not be where I am today without the friends that I have formed through First Church. Thank you, Ann. So now, uh, Nina, how have your friendships strengthened your faith in God? Well, I feel like most days I get so little signs from God in my daily life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those times, those little signs point to relationships in my life, whether that's friendship or to my husband or kids. Um, and often when I call somebody, they say, oh, I was just thinking about you or, oh, I really needed to hear that or, you know, any number of things. And I feel like those aren't coincidences. Those are signs from the Holy Spirit that lead me, that lead them. And those are those little interwoven things that really keep me close to God all the time. Good to hear. And uh, Robin, so how has uh, how have your friendships helped you through the last few months? Well, I've always felt it's important to have friends of all ages and to keep making new friends. And church makes it easy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so through these last few months, um, friends have helped me in many ways. Um, they've give, given me faith, restored my faith, that, that God will see me through the difficult times that we're experiencing, and we'll see each other through. And church friends also give me hope for the future of the church and the nation. I see how they're raising their children and know that generations to come will keep First Church going. And I, it, they make me feel loved. I know they're checking in with me now and then. We get together now and then in a socially distant way. And I know that if I need anything, I can count on my friends. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, being thoughtful uh, in answering those questions. So now we get to transition to our responsive call to worship. Those who love a pure heart and are gracious in speech will have the best friends possible. As iron sharpens iron, so does a friend better a friend. Let us worship God who reconciles us and with us through grace and forgiveness. Let us worship God through Jesus Christ, our loving brother and friend. Now let us join together in singing. God, we thank you for our people with words printed on the screen and the online bulletin.
good morning, Barry and David, and thank you for helping uh, lead some of the liturgy this morning. Uh, before Glad to be here. Thanks. Good morning, Adam. <laughs> good morning, and everybody. And everybody else, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Before uh, before you get to help uh, lead the uh, the prayer, I just wanted to give you a chance, though, to talk a little bit about friendship and uh, men's ministry. Either one of you want to start? Well, as we've said in the past, men's ministry, we're, we're a small group that we've been meeting. We tend to be, you know, we fluctuate anywhere from 10 to 12 people. I mean, a weekly meeting, we've gone up to 20. Um, the bonds that have been made through this are astounding of friendship. You know, people that I thought were, you know, I knew, I thought of friends, now I hold them closer. I think it's strengthened our bonds. And even, you know, it's strengthened us and our in our faith also Dave would you like to add to that yeah I think that that's the whole there was the original intent was to make sure that we were men uh, that could share their faith experiences and through this has become uh, where we were friends with people already we've strengthened those bonds and I think we've gotten new friends uh, and we're able to open up to each other in a way that I didn't expect when we first started, and I think now we're, we're we do have a group, good group of guys that, like Barry says, some weeks it's five or six, some weeks it's ten or twelve, but reality it does change. The dynamic changes, but the reality is the group itself is really uh, bonded and become quite friendly with each other on a different level where we can we can be honest with each other, we can we can joke around, but we can care about each other on a really different level and. I think the whole intent, uh, the original intent by uh, you, Adam, and, and Jay at the beginning has really transpired into something that's it's, uh, it's quite good. It's, it's a lot of fun. And we're always looking for more people. So, guys, if you want to come, please join us uh, every other Saturday, 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to drop a fire pit note for next Friday, but we don't got to do that. There we go. <laughs> Yes, yeah, there's, you can put details on the Facebook page and uh, the website as well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we just don't talk about faith. We talk about all kinds of things. We talk about, you know, what you're going through in your normal life. Sometimes we get a, we get a little adrift, but we, we always bring it back. We try to come up with a common theme, but it's not a rigid group. It's more of a, a, a group that just gets together and shares with each other good times, bad times, things that are going on. And there are many times when we start with one idea and end up somewhere completely different. But I think the idea is to share and to come up with uh, common ideas and to come up with even solutions to some things we're all going through. It's the Christian way or the Christian uh, process that really helps a lot of us walk out of there in, much, um, in a much better spirit than when we walk in. Okay. Well, thank you for your leadership and for your friendship with one another and within the church and, uh, uh, being open to, to new friendships as well. Join us now in the opening prayer. As printed in your online bulletin. God, you have created for us connections with one another and with you. We thank you for fellow pilgrims whose presence gives us joy, whose support and accountability makes us better people and better disciples of Christ. May we seek to console to understand and to love as we accept the loving friendship of others. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for his friends across all times and places, and who taught his, us, his friends, to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Arlene. And we're friends. You are friends. <laughs> and thanks so much for helping lead worship. So. Could you all uh, explain how the two of you first met? Well, it was through softball. I was playing second base and Marlene was playing shortstop. Double play combination. Yeah, and okay. 
we just started talking on the sideline and it was like we were friends forever and everybody thought we had been friends for decades and we had just met 10 minutes earlier. So from there, Michelle introduced me to First Church when I was looking for a church for our family, Brad and Kevin and I, and uh, she just got us involved in that. And because of her faith and her, uh, you know, love of First Church, we started attending and it was, it's been positive ever since. And I'll add to that because Marlene and I became friends, then we played co-ed softball together and that's how she met Brad. So. Exactly. Friendships <laughs> extend. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. And so now, how has it been to be uh, close friends and also to be active and involved in as leaders of the church? I think it's been really nice to be, to have the friendship and be able to, when we're working through being leaders of the church, talk to each other and bounce ideas off each other and listen to each other. So that's been really important part. Yeah, and I think part of it, too, is that when we're touched by something that's happening, whether it's in our community or the church, we have each other to talk to about, about it and just, you know, go through it together and experience it together. And being part of the church has just been, I think, an added bonus to our friendship. Yes, I'd agree. The love of our friendship and our fellowship is a reflection of God's love shared with us all through Jesus Christ. May we give thanks for the gift of our common faith and ministries as we give to the church and listen to Dan and Linda perform What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Join us in the prayer of dedication printed in the online bulletin. What a privilege it is to carry our prayers to Jesus and to our friends who support us. What a privilege it is to carry together the cost and joys of discipleship 
with people who were once were strangers to us, but now are our friends. We dedicate our offerings and our friendships to you, O God, from whom all blessings and connections flow. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Could you introduce yourselves? I'm Margie Ruggieri. And I'm Michelle Steinhoff. We're the current members of March. And friends. And friends. Today's reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. This takes place just after the Pentecost event with the mighty wind, the fire, and the speaking in different languages, and Peter's sermon to the gathered crowds in the neighborhood. Reportedly, 3,000 of them convert to this new faith in Jesus. The they mentioned in today's reading is those first followers of Jesus who decide that they will live together in a community. Michelle and Margie, could you read for us today's scripture reading? Sure. Listen now for God's word. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to the number of those who were being saved. Here ends the reading. Thanks so much. Now, before I start my sermon, I just wanted to point out that uh, you all have not only been members at large together, but also uh, serve or have served in other leadership positions at church, do other things in the community, and you are also friends. So what do you admire about how the other person shares their life and themselves with others, and what does that mean for your friendship? That's easy, Adam. I admire Michelle for not only stepping up when asked to help someone in need, but she identifies people in need of help before she's even asked. If they're friends or strangers, their issues are big or small, Michelle is always there to offer assistance. And on a personal note, as a cherished friend, she offers an ear to listen, laughter at my faults, and candy at my doorstep, because that's what friends are for. And Adam, I admire Margie because she doesn't know how to say no, no matter how many times I've tried to teach her that. If a family member or someone at our church or someone in the community at large has a need, Margie's the first one to fill it with a smile on her face. Um, she's been my dearest friend through all my ups and downs, and there have been plenty. She knows when to reassure me with words and when to just sit quietly by my side, and when to bring me ice cream. Let us pray. God, may your word be a true friend to us, supporting us and making us accountable to you and to one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You have heard some church folk discuss friendship while leading worship this morning. They agree that they cannot yet be together in the usual way, but they are also grateful to simply have each other and their shared faith in God. The story of the early church near the end of Acts chapter 2 doesn't use the specific Greek word for friendship, but it does use a related Greek word for fellowship. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. Two of those practices Preaching and prayers are considered more spiritual, binding us with God above, while the other two are more social, fellowship and breaking of the bread. And yet over the long term, it is crucial to have all of those practices to make us into a faith community. Besides our sanctuary and our chapel, the next most valued common space that we have is here, Fellowship Hall, where we break bread together over potlucks, where we gather after 10 a.m. worship for coffee hour, here in the back left corner hangs a painting of the church's first Puritans talking with each other as they await to enter the meeting house for worship. What distinguished Puritans back then from other people of Christian faith is that Puritans did not simply allow one leader to tell them what to do. They discerned their path together, relatively speaking, as equals and as friends. Now, a lot of progress has been made over the last 400 years related to equality, and there is still much more progress needed about equality yet today. Still, I think that those Puritans will have 
would have uh, theoretically agreed with the quotation that is attributed to Albert Camus. Don't walk in front of me, I may not follow. Don't walk behind me, I may not lead. Walk beside me and be my friend. Fellowship and friendship is what guided those people of faith. Now, as the early church of Acts 2 shared in daily practices of eating together, of being formed together, of being in fellowship, they also witnessed signs and wonders done by the apostles. Now, some of those wonders may have been physical miracles, but I also think that some of those signs and wonders may have been a result of the transformational power of fellowship. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King writes that love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Over the past weeks, I have seen people who were once not friends unite in seeking racial justice together. In the last months, I have seen people across different religious backgrounds coming together online and finding the common ground of faith and hope in this time of pandemic. Those are wonders and signs to behold. We have been using Jennifer Masari's quilt called Connections as a visual leitmotif since Lent, reminding us of the church's theme of connections, which comes to a close today. Of course, we will remain connected to God through the Holy Spirit, and we will remain connected to one another through loving fellowship and friendship. I have had a dream on a couple of occasions over the last couple of months, and that dream actually takes place right here. In that dream, a young child pulls her grandmother to this corner of Fellowship Hall and asks her why there is a quilt with jigsaw puzzle shapes on it hanging next to a painting with people with funny hats on. The grandmother kneels down next to her grandchild and says, Long ago, a sickness caused us to stay away from each other for a while. It was sad. And yet during that separation, it also caused an awakening in the hearts of God's people to see how important family, to see how important friends, to see how important faith are. During that time, this quilt reminded us of how we are all like puzzle pieces, fitting together in God's family, yearning to be united in love and hope and faith, even if we are different shapes, even if we are different colors, even if we are not together physically in that moment. So that when the sickness no longer threatened us, and the separation went away. The people of the church gathered for worship to praise God, and then they came downstairs here to Fellowship Hall. They all signed the back of the quilt, and then we had the best coffee hour ever. Although, she said to her grandchild, this moment here and now, this is pretty good too. The grandmother gave her grandchild a big hug and then said, okay, now you can go walk over there to the table and have some juice and cookies with your friends. May we be connected in our striving for justice and our fellowship and friendship and our hope and faith in God through Jesus Christ who binds our hearts as one. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. We love your abundant blessings, O God, that ground us, especially in this difficult time. We give thanks for the gift of friends and family, neighbors and confidants whose love give us hope and community. We give thanks for friends who reach out to us and for friends whom we reach out to when we remember that regardless of our differences, they love us fully. May we sustain friendships even when we disagree May we remember our covenant with each other as we remember our covenant with you, a covenant signed and sealed by Jesus Christ who gave his life for his friends, for us. We pray this day for protesters and for police, for all who feel unsettled right now and who seek to express themselves in peace. We pray especially for communities of color. So many people are hurting due to uncertainty, lost jobs, illness, and injury, and anxiety. We pray for people feeling isolated or hurting in body or in spirit as we name some now. Susan, Sue, Stan, 
Janet, Marion, Joe, Kristen, Carol, Don, Vinny, Edna, Evelyn, Alice, Al, Paula, Dolly, and many others. If it is your will, grant them your healing spirit. We pray also for the souls of those who have died. We pray for the soul of James White, the father of Bob White, and for other family and friends. Embrace the dead in your loving arms. May we continue to walk in our journeys of pilgrim fellowship, seeking you and the friendship of our human family. May we thirst together for righteousness and for justice and for all people. In the name of Christ, to establish the beloved community on earth, to approach your beloved kingdom in heaven. Amen. And now let us sing together the final hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Words are printed in the online bulletin and on the screen. When we are called to part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. May we go now and serve God this week, and may we hope to meet again, and may our hopes be fulfilled in the name of God, our Creator, our Savior, and our Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>